Hey everyone, welcome back to Crown Corner, the channel where we dive into the wild world of entitled people and their unbelievable stories. Hope you enjoy it, and without further ado, let's go. This happened during the long weekend at an Easter party at my cousin's house. My 16M, Dad and I had arrived early and I managed to snag the armchair that's isolated from the other seat. This armchair was optimal for me, being I'm antisocial and introverted, and I hate being touched unprompted. The other seats are couches and bar stools at a bench. More people arrive, great and fine. The woman, we'll call her B, who usually sits in the armchair, comes up to me. I don't know how old she is, but she's way older than I am and pretty rich too. D, can I sit there? Me, stares at her because what the F, mm. D, could I sit there? Me, er, she never even said please. I didn't want to say no, not to be rude, but I also didn't want to say yes because I'm sitting there. D, there are plenty of seats. She looks around at the other seats and points to them to make a point as if that logic doesn't also apply to her. Me, man. Ooh, B, you could learn some manners. I was flabbergasted at this. I didn't even say anything. E, you could use them someday. Me? Yep. She walks away. I whip out my phone and message my friends about it because... What? What? Then she has the audacity to go up to my dad, right in front of me, as I'm messaging my friends. E, your son was really rude to me. Dad, really. He looks at me then back to B. D, yes. He won't let me sit there. Dad looks at me again as I try not to burst out laughing because she sounds like child daubing on another child. Oh, B. He has no manners. Dad. Oh, well. D. You should teach him some manners. Dad. He actually injured himself pretty badly and can't really walk. I told him to sit there, father coming in clutch for me and lying to her face. D. Oh, if I had known, I wouldn't have said such things. He just had to let me know. Then she starts kind of babying me. I'm pretty sure at some point during the conversation she asked my dad to tell me to move. Overall, it was a bizarre experience, and I sat there for pretty much the entirety of lunch. As I said, she started babying me, and I felt gross about it. I asked my dad for literally just a cracker with some dip, and she dove right in and said she would get it for me even though I asked my dad. Then she grabbed my shoulder into a death grip and told me she would do whatever I needed, that I could always come to her. I felt even less bad about not giving her my seat because of this. When my dad and I left, he asked me what happened and I explained it, while laughing, of course. He said because she's rich and so much older than me, she thinks she's entitled enough to ask younger people for things and expects to get it. A bit of a backstory. I divorced my ex a little over nine years ago after 14 years of marriage. I won't go into the specifics as to why, but... Suffice it to say, he was a lying, cheating jerk. Early on during the marriage, I tended to not be all that assertive until I finally had my fill and grew a backbone. He hated that. He did not like hearing the word no from me or in doing things my own way. So fast forward to a month after we were initially divorced. He was in his new place, and I was in my house, formerly the house we shared, with our sons, but he still had a ton of his stuff there. Stuff I didn't want even though I paid for a lot of it, but stuff I knew he really wanted. He finally reached out and demanded not asking, demanding I send him his stuff. Just toss it all in boxes and send it over to him. His exact words. Mind you, he was only about 10 miles away from me at that point and could easily come over to do it himself. He didn't want to do that because he'd have to see me. Something he was actively trying not to do. Cue the MC. Now a lot of what he had were collectibles. No details, but some of it was fairly expensive and fragile. So I did as he asked. Correction demanded. I tossed it all into numerous boxes. Now some of the truly expensive items, I did take great care in packing them, only because I knew my sons would probably eventually want them. But for the stuff I knew my ex really wanted and care a lot about, no. I just tossed it all in a box without a care in the world. Now I did inspect everything, and while I just dumped them in boxes, nothing was damaged by me. I also took pictures up to prove it. So once I closed them all up, I told him to either to get his ass over to pick it up or get someone to do it for him. 
he got someone to do it. Now I was not at the house when this person picked everything up, but my sons and sister were... They did not know how everything was packed. They only showed him boxes. They told me that the person who picked up the boxes quite literally just tossed them into the back of a pickup without a care in the world and then sped away. Later that night, I got a call from my ex who started calling me a bitch for destroying all his stuff. I told him that everything was fine before I closed the box up and I had proof of it. I then said that maybe next time be a bit nicer to me when making requests and reminded him he demanded that I toss it all in boxes, but he didn't tell me to be gentle in doing so. I hung up on him and proceeded to enjoy my celebratory glass of wine that evening, hoping that he was enjoying the shattered remains. I'm 16 and I'm a huge Sonic fan. I have mental health problems such as depression and suicidal thoughts, but Sonic has always put a smile on my face. This happened back in April of 2020. In the UK, COVID really hit around late March and many people I knew were infected. The only good thing that year was I got to see the Sonic movie twice before COVID shut down cinemas. So I bought a Sonic face mask from the Sega shop online in the UK and I got a lot of praise telling me how cool it was. One person didn't like the fact that I had it. I went out one day because I was on a small diet and I fancied some zero sugar pink lemonade so I went to Asda. As I'm trying to find it, I hear a little kid. Wow, that's so cool. I love your mask. I look down and see a seven-year-old girl, and I smile under the mask, which was pointless because she couldn't see it. Yeah, I know, right? It's awesome. You can get it for Pepsin, mostly safe Peps 2 for delivery. Which that pest who actually goes to a charity that makes face masks. Cool, all right. See, yeah, gotta go fast. And the little girl runs back to her mother, making me super happy that she said those words got to go fast. Anyway, I continue my shopping. Only a minute later, I hear a loud am, and I ignored it, thinking someone was trying to get an employee's attention until I felt a strong hand on my shoulder, making me turn quite violently. You, I've been trying to ask you something for three minutes. You were a word I hate hearing it. I stood in shock, causing another thing to be mentioned. I hate being forcefully moved by strangers if they simply tapped my shoulder. I wouldn't have minded, but nope, this crazy a hole had to spin me forcefully. My daughter wants your mask. Give. She put out her hand as if she was expecting me to give to her, so I reply, I'm sorry, but this is my mask. I bought it with my own money. I can't do... Oh, shut up, you fucking gay fag. She called me this cause of my pink hair, and I think she assumed I was gay, which I'm not BTS. I see the sweet little girl telling her mother, Mommy, I don't want his mask. I want one that is his on a website. He got the mask from. Then the mother goes, I'm not paying Steen for a stupid mask. Me, being the smartass I am, I went, But you're paying about so hundred on nine bottles of wine? I saw her trolley and saw it nearly full of alcohol. This made her angrier, and she even tried to punch me because I looked older and was freakishly tall, but... The thing is, I quit judo about five years ago and have played football for three. So I have gotten some kind of self-defense skill, so before she could punch me, I kid you not, I caught her fist and her being stupid. I pulled down her arm while she tried to pull it up. So I smirked and let go, which caused her to punch herself in the face like a moron she fell backwards and knocked into her trolley. Help. Rape. Rape. I've just been sexually assaulted. Help. An employee came over to see and ask what was going on but I couldn't get a word in because the lady was screaming about how I assaulted her and was trying to rape her little girl. The employee didn't even try to listen to my side as he immediately grabbed his manager. The police were called and I was about to be arrested because there was no other witnesses or a camera at the aisle we were at, but my savior stepped up and you know who it was. It was the little girl. Excuse me, police me. She tugged one of the policemen's pants and he looked down at her. That man isn't bad, it was mommy. She explained the best she could, and it was enough for them to piece together that the mother tried to assault me and I self-defended myself. She was arrested for assault and another charge I don't remember, but here is the best part. Apparently, she wasn't even allowed to see her daughter because she had violent drunk behavior problems and that she kidnapped her daughter from school and went to get alcohol. Needless to say, she's in jail Ike how long, but it was worth it, seeing her screaming at me when she saw me leave the Asta while she was sitting in the back seat of a police car. Before I left, the employee apologized to me, but I told him how unbelievably rude he was about how he wasn't interested to hear my side of the story as it was scary and terrifying to me. The manager let me go home with a six-pack of zero-sugar-pink lemonade. Edit one. 
Wow, thank you all so much. I woke up seeing all the comments and praise it. It means a lot to me. Just one quick thing I want to clarify is that some people are getting a bit concerned. The little girl was taken by the police, and she knew where she and her dad lived, so she directed the police, and she's now safe with her father. Also, I'm not asking anyone to believe me, I'm just simply telling my experience. Edit 2. The employee who ignored me and nearly got me arrested was fired after he was following a black family around as he thought they were stealing when they were simply placing shopping in their trolley. Racist piece of shit. Edit 3. Oh my god, you are not gonna believe this. So I was on a Discord call with friends laughing my ass off with them as we were telling funny stories and jokes. My friend Jack told us how he met Karen when he was with his sister in Iceland, and then I told them my story again. One of my other friends laughed, saying that that girl sounds like my cousin Emma. It turns out it was actually my friend's cousin. I asked to see her the next time we got on a call, and I saw her again two days later. We both shared a laugh, and later on I spoke to her dad, my friend's uncle. We talked about what happened with her mother and that he got full custody of Emma. I asked him if she was still a fan of Sonic, and I was relieved to find out she still was, so I got their address and ordered a Sonic face mask from the UK Sega shop online. Hopefully, they'll get it soon. Enjoying the stories yet? If you do, please subscribe, like, and comment. After telling some stories about my past, I have now brought all of you to the present. And by the present, I mean yesterday. So technically, still in the past. My head hurts. Anyway, I was walking home from a friend's house, and on the way back, I was walking close to the curb, but not exactly next to it. I wasn't focusing since I was listening to music, and suddenly I saw a car go onto part of the pavement, and the side mirror hit me in the gut, and it hurt bad. I was trying to catch my breath by leaning on the wall opposite, and that's when she stepped out of her car, showing all her ugly glory. The conversation went as follows. DM, what do you think you're doing? Me, coughing. Mm. You hit me with your car. EM. You broke my side mirror. You have to pay for that. Me. You went onto the pavement, hit me with, and you expect me to pay? That's when she walked up to me and punched me in my gut, right where she hit me with her car. Punched me multiple times, rings and all. I swear I coughed up blood. She then noticed my phone and tried to take it. EM. If you're not going to pay, I'll just take your phone and bracelet as compensation. This crossed the line. My phone is one thing, but my bracelet is another. That bracelet holds so much value to me. Those who have been reading my stories for a while know that I'm trans. And this bracelet is one that I got from my parents while they were in Tunisia, and it says Laura in Arabic. I love this bracelet. I resisted as much as I could all the while screaming, and that's when I saw another woman, who will be known as Hero, push her away from me. EM. He took my daughter's phone and bracelet from her. I saw her daughter in the car. She could not be older than eight. And again, misgendering me. Hero, I saw everything. Turns to me. Are you okay? Me? Still coughing? I think so. Although I did cough up blood not too long ago. Hero, what's your name? Me, Laura. Hero, I'll call an ambulance. Turns to EM. I suggest you leave before I make you. EM, but... Hmm, hmm. Hero, now... The EM left. I went to the hospital. I didn't have any serious injuries, but she left a massive purple bruise on my stomach. While at the hospital, Hero said that she took a pic of her registration plate and will report her to the police. We exchanged phone numbers and she stayed with me until I could leave the hospital, which was late last night. Still feeling in pain, but it's not as bad as what it was. Edit 1. I spoke with Hero about details and went to the police station with the evidence and information we have and locate the EMM said that if we could get a court case sometime in August, late July at the earliest, once a date has been confirmed, I shall let you know. Edit 2. I got a call from my local police station. The EM has been found. Charges were pressed and got a confirmed court date being August 7th. We've both been to the station for separate interrogations, and Hero will be accompanying me as my key witness. Apparently there are others as well, but I'm not sure who they are. I'll update if anything happens between now and then. So I work as a kitchen hand waiter in a restaurant that's connected to a bowling club. I've been working here for about two years now, and I've had my fair share of unpleasant customers, but this one takes the cake. EM, entitled mother, ED, entitled father, K, their son, was actually quite nice. 
CW coworker, me, myself. So as some may know, working in a restaurant, especially a busy one, can be quite difficult on some nights if there are promotions or happy hours. On Thursdays, the bowling club hosts a poker night, and one of the prizes is a free meal ticket for every game you win. Normally, most of our regulars tend to win, so it's normal to see them, but at times we do get a couple new faces. On this night, I was working as a waiter for the night when I spotted a couple and their son that I've never seen before. I greet them, give them a couple menus, and walk off to deal with other business. At around 7.30, which is the break time for poker, we get a lot of customers and some of those customers have the meal tickets I mentioned. One of our regulars came over with two meal tickets, one for him and his girlfriend. At this point, I see the EM come over to the till and casually ask if she could have one of the tickets as her kid wanted more food. He told her no, and this was what unfolded. EM, excuse me, are you that selfish that you'd allow a child to go hungry? Mind you, they ordered a lot of food and the kid barely ate anything? Customer, sorry, but we're also hungry. EM, I can't believe you, you selfish pig. Me, ma'am, please calm down. You're disturbing the other customers. EM, who are you to tell me what to do? Me, I'm just trying to be nice, ma'am. If your son needs more food, I'll happily cook up a bowl of fried rice for him. EM, at least you know how to treat a woman. I feel bad for your girlfriend, you pig. She then walks back to her table in a big fuss and starts complaining about the poor service we're providing. As I was finishing up the tile and got to take food out, I brung the couple their food, two sweet corn and crab soups, and thanked me for the quick defuse. As soon as I walk back into the kitchen, I hear a scream from the outside. Em attempted to take away her food and spilled it all over the customer. The girl was screaming in agony over multiple burns and myself and a co-worker rushed out with a wet towel and wipes. EM, see what happens when you refuse to help a child, you dumb witch? Me, step away now, ma'am. AD, don't you dare talk to my wife like that again. CW, we need to call an ambulance now. Me go grab, tell the bar staff to get some ice. I rush over and they bring over the tub of ice they'd use for drinks, and we quiz start patting her down with wet towels and ice. Everything was cooling down until my CW and the boyfriend noticed the couple were trying to leave. Customer. Well, I get the F back here. Literally sprinted at them. CW, stop right now. AD, don't you come near me or I'll effing knock your teeth in. EM, hurry up, K. The boyfriend managed to swing a hook at AD, but he blocked it and AD kicked him right in the nuts. Both EM and Eck made it out the door, but security was waiting, and they quickly ran back in. My CW managed to help up the boyfriend, and as he was about to get him up, AD swung at CW and clocked him in the ear. With both CW and the boyfriend down, I ran over to see if they were all right, and ED tried to grab me by the hair, to which I slapped it away. AD, stay the F away from us, and ran towards the door. As we were being helped up by some of the staff and customers, one of the guards who I've known since I started working here came from around the corner with AD in an arm lock, that looked like he was about to snap his arm off. Things settled down as the girl was taken to hospital for multiple burns. My CW and I were a bit spooked from the incident and didn't say much for the time being. As police rolled up, we were asked by co-workers multiple times if we were okay and that we might not be in a good headspace for questioning. I wasn't too keen on it, so my CW took the bullet for me and explained it first. After customers and staff were questioned, I was surprised when I looked up to a young boy standing in front of me crying with an officer next to him. Kig, I'm really sorry. Burst into tears as he hugged me. Me, it's okay? It's okay. I felt bad for the kid that he had to not only go through that experience, but I reckon his parents are always like this. After about 30 minutes, the couple were taken into custody, and that was the last time I saw them. My boss is now extremely overprotective whenever a customer starts to argue or cause a scene with me or my CW. In the end, we ended the night with a final game of poker, to which one of the regulars who's in his 60s won with a royal flush, and we gave him three meal tickets. So sad to think all of this was over a free meal. Part 2. Gonna call this a trilogy, since there's more to the story as of the past two weeks. So let's get into it. Me. Me, CW, co-worker, B... Overly protective boss. K kid, EA, aunt that wants to kill us. A couple weeks ago, I posted a story about how a couple attacked a customer, a coworker, and myself over not getting free food. 
I thank you all for the support you've given me and my colleagues. So, you may be asking whatever happened to the GF and BF after the incident. Well, let's start off with that. The couple who also happen to be close friends of mine are doing well. My friend the GF has been recovering from her burns and she's doing great. My coworker and I have been getting a lot more attention as word spread throughout the town about the incident, and I'm thankful to those that supported us. About a week ago, when I was working my Friday shift, I noticed that a young woman was complaining that her food was cold. I walked to ask her if she'd like it reheated when I noticed the young boy who was with the EPs that night. I say hello to him, and he smiles and waves back. As I grab a couple of plates from our dish rack, he walks into the kitchen. We don't have a door so anyone can walk in and again says hello and that he's sorry for the incident. At this point, my heart kind of failed and couldn't resist hugging the little guy. For about three minutes, we were talking about his school and that he enjoys baseball, which I also enjoy. I tell him I need to take some food out, and he just sticks around the kitchen area, sitting on a stool and chatting with my CW. When I walk over to the table, the woman recognizes me, and I swear I could see Satan staring into my soul because this woman wasn't just unhappy with her food being cold. There was something else. I place the food down, and this woman leans in and looks me dead in the eyes, and the conversation went like this. EA, so, you're the witch that attacked my sister. Me, pardon? EA, don't you dare play dumb with me, you witch. You attacked my sister and got arrested. At this point, I figured out who she is. Me, you're kidding me. She spilled hot soup all over my friend, and her husband assaulted my CW and I. EAK, she effing deserved it. Why on earth would they even let someone like you work here after that? Me. Maybe because I'm a good worker and don't go around pouring hot soup on innocent people because they have anger issues. EA gets up and slaps me. Hey, uh, you witch. My sister didn't such thing. Now, at this point, the whole club could hear us and K, B, C, W, and a couple customers come over to see what's up. My B immediately sees the red mark on my face. And it felt she went super cyan because she walks over to EA and looks her dead in the eyes and says, E, don't you ever do that again. You hear me? AA kind of craps herself. K, why did you hurt me? Falling his eyes out as he hugged my waist. AA, this witch took your mummy and daddy away. She doesn't deserve your sympathy. K, CW, you have no right to lay a hand on her either. D, I want you out of my restaurant now. He picks up her stuff and starts signaling Kay to go with her, but he wasn't leaving my side. Kay, no. You heard her like you did to me. Now, when he said that he then pulled up his sleeve and there's this big purple brood on his arm, I literally felt like socking this woman so hard. EA, Kay, get over here now or I will do it again. He storms over towards me, but CW steps in front of me to protect Kay and I. EA, move or my brother-in-law won't be only one kicking your butt. E. Security, get her out of here now. At this point, multiple people called the police and were scrumming around me and Kay to defend us from this woman. When security showed up, she was detained by the same security guard who nearly ripped E.D.'s arm off. S.G., calm down now. E.A., you can't do this. You're hurting me out. He held her down for a couple minutes and police finally show up, cuffed and into the back of a car. I was comforting Kay from all of this, and I now felt like an older sister to this kid. Not only did he have to go through the first incident, but he was also being abused by his aunt. After bawling his eyes again, I started tearing up because I couldn't handle seeing this kid pouring his heart out. Not long after, police came over and asked for our statements, and I showed him the bruise. He was disgusted at how purple it was. When he took my statement, we took Kay over to the ambulance, and they helped him into the back, and I went with him to hospital to get him checked out. A day later, after Kay had passed out in my arms, we had found out that EA told the police that Kay was being bullied at school and an older kid gave him the bruise. To think that this witch had the audacity to hit this kid for no reason at all is mind-blowing. For a few hours, he slept like baby next to me and GF and BF came in with flowers for Kay. We talked about what happened and this is too much for this young kid to go through. I received a call from work telling me I had a week off with pay to recover from the incident. In that time, I spent all that time with Kay. His grandparents have taken him in, and we're very good friends now. Now, to top off this part of the story, yes, there's more. GF and BF have pressed charges as well as CW for the incident beforehand. EA is still in custody as they're still investigating the bruises on Kay's arm. 
I'll be posting the finale of this experience soon, so be patient. This experience has shook my entire world upside down. Yes, it's been a horrific experience, but I've learned that not all kids are as heartless as their elders. Thank you so much for reading this, and have a wonderful day. Part 3 This is the final post of the worst experience I've ever dealt with entitled parents. Me. Me, obviously. Okay. Coolest kid I've ever met. GM. Sweetest grandma ever. EM. Satan. HC. Head police chief. FP. Friendly police officer. Friends with. After me and Kay spent a week hanging out and doing fun activities, bowling, movies, etc., we went back to his grandparents' house as he has been moved into their care, as both the EPs and his EA are incapable of caring for Kay, and it would be a danger to his safety have them anywhere near him. Now his grandparents are honestly some of the nicest people I've ever met, and I don't know how they are even related to EM or EA. GM is an ex-nurse and had been taking care of Kay's arm since we left the hospital. Whenever we'd hang out, she'd be chilling in the background as she didn't want to interfere with our time, but I insisted on her joining in. She's such a lovely woman. Fast forward to three days ago, EM has been released on bail for a while now, but has had no contact with Kay since the incident. I was called into the station as EM apparently wanted to talk with me. I had my doubts, but I wanted to get it over with. I felt like this needed to end. I still enjoy Kay's company, and he's like a little brother to me. I walked into the station and one of the officers who I'm friends with asked if Key was with me. I told her no, and it turns out EM requested Kay to be present. We walked into the head office and there was EM. I was greeted by the chief and two other officers as I sat down on the chair furthest from EM. The chief began to tell me that EM only wants to talk about the incident and had no intention of being aggressive. Bullcrap. She turns to me and I was still extremely uncomfortable being near her, but I put myself here. EM. Where's K? Me. I've been told not to tell you. EM, no. She has to tell me where he... HC, quiet down. EM was startled at this point and looked like she was on the brink of tears. Me. If it helps, your son is fine. He's happy and his bruise is healing well. EM. That's good, at least you're being useful in helping the family you destroyed. I had it. I was done. After all of the crap she, ED, and EA did, I was so frustrated and just bursted out. Me. I'm here for K, not you. I've only ever done this for K, not you. Do you really think after all of this, I'm going to leave him? No. I may have no right to tell you how to parent, but I damn sure have the right to duty of care for an innocent child being abused by his aunt for an incident that you caused. Now you can sit there and act like you're entitled to my services for your son. But don't you think for a second that I'll ever forgive you for what you did to GF? Honestly, you don't deserve K cause K deserves better than a psychotic, manipulative, entitled witch like you. Now I know what a few may be thinking I went a little too far. But all this time I have kept my emotions at bay and I needed to get them out. EM was absolutely speechless. She couldn't believe what I had just said. HC then talked about how what I had just said was inappropriate. But he also understood and gave me a warning. After that, she wasn't talking at all. HC explained that both GF and BF pressed charges as well as CW. I, on the other hand, decided not to. I didn't want revenge on this woman. I wanted to see her have the hammer of justice brought down hard on her entitlement. I got up and was escorted out of the office, and FBI told me that what I did was both brave but stupid, especially in front of HC. I get in my car and basically screamed at the steering wheel. All my stress was finally out. I headed home when I got a text from the GM telling me that Kay wanted to thank me by taking me out on a date. Two, bloody cute. We went out to Sizzler's, family diner, and had a blast. We talked about baseball and gaming and all the things Key enjoyed. I loved every second with this kid. We said our goodbyes and went home. As I was driving back, I got a phone call from the GM. She thanked me for everything I've done for Kay. This experience alone has brought a whole bunch of challenges I've had to overcome, and one of the craziest I'll ever experience in my life. I want to thank all of you for reading and supporting me throughout this journey of words. And to Kay, or Tyler, if you ever read this, I want to let you know that deep down you are a very brave, honest, and awesome person. A couple weeks ago we were waiters and customers, and now we're good friends. Thank you for this journey, and I still owe you a bowl of fried rice. This is Locke, signing off. I worked at a clothing store in a mall for a year and a half. 
It was not fun, but I was thinking back to my time there recently and I forgot this golden gem of revenge. So a new girl had just been hired as many new people did in that job, and right away you could tell she thought she was hot stuff. We're talking acting like a manager, talking how many hours she had, and worst of all, she wouldn't shut up about all the dudes that was trying to get her to date them and how she manipulates them into paying for her stuff. To put it lightly, she was a cold-hearted witch who made everyone feel bad about their insignificant lives, as she put it. Here's where things go down. In our store, all the racks were milled steel bars and hooks, so really hard to break and really expensive. They could, however, be bent out of shape if enough heavy coats stay on them for long periods of time. Mrs. Hot Stuff here thought it would be a good idea to impress the management by putting all the coats on the same rack using the milled steel bars instead of a circular rack that wouldn't work. I protested, of course, as I'd been there longer, but she said, I get paid more than you, so do what I say. She got hired as a key holder out of the gate, so she made a dollar more than I did per hour. I go along with it, put the heavy winter coats up on the milled steel, and go about my life. Well, two weeks later, the milled steel is, of course, warped, and when management saw this, they flipped. Anyway, she blames it on me, and I get written up for it. Now, I refuse to sign, so they gave me less hours, which also cut my pay. Because she lied, I was now making 50 less than before, and had a formal written complaint against me to say I was ticked off, wouldn't even start. So I devised a plan to get back at her. You see, the drywall in the center pillars had sustained water damage for an early melt earlier that year, making them extremely soft. However, they provide some of the largest coverage of shelf space in the entire store, meaning basically a good 20 of shelf space couldn't be used. Now the kicker is Miss Hot Stuff didn't know about this as she came in a week after it had happened, and to the naked eye, you wouldn't think the pillar couldn't be used as there were banners on it to try and hide the yellowing. I may have suggested what a waste not being able to have product on the pillars was and how if someone could come up with a nice display, it would bring in a lot of customers due to how people could see it from the mall main floor. We were just off the food court. Her eyes lit up. Now here's the thing. I was taking a small break to a nice snowy lake cabin the next day and the people she had working with her were the manager or the temps who were not allowed to handle marketing and logistics. Now, I knew she wouldn't want the managers to see it because she wanted all the glory from it. She wanted to show to our three stores in the mall that her store was the best while the managers weren't around. So her being with a temp and both of them not being able to put up shelving, she ended up putting the heavy winter clothing on milled steel racks attached to the soft draw pillars. Got the drywall on the pillars collapsed within a week and ruined $500 worth of product. Now she tried to shift blame on me, but I was away for the whole week, so it could not have been me because obviously that can't happen if I'm in the forest hundreds of miles from civilization. So no dice there, and she promptly got charged with the repair, demoted to sales associate, and written up for what they finally realized was not just this, but the one they wanted me to sign. The repair was $2,500 plus the $500 stock that got destroyed when 40 pounds of drywall came crashing down on it. But I wasn't done yet, you see. Our manager in our store specifically was pretty chill, and she's still a personal friend to me. Now, as I mentioned before, she wouldn't shut up about all the men she was manipulating and how the only thing that mattered was the money, and boy, oh boy, did she use the group chat to say a lot of this. Sometimes one of these dudes would come around and take her lunch. Let's just say when she was in the back for a little while, finishing something up, I let them see the text channel if they promised not to let her know I told them. So often they'd go on their lunch date, and after one or two days, she'd be down a man. Finally, this boiled over when one of them took her phone and saw how many guys she had been manipulating for money and messaged all of them about how much of a lying witch she was. After two months, her fountain of man money dried up, and since she was demoted to a sales associate now, she didn't have the money to spend on all her lavish nights out or designer clothing. She eventually moved up to another store for more hours and stole money from the till, causing her to get fired. A fitting end to a backstabbing ice queen, I think. I eventually left that job after half a year to pursue my current job. Edit. To clear things up. To those saying that charging an employee for repairs is illegal, that's true. However, she decided to instead take a pay cut until it was paid back and keep her job rather than be fired. Minimum wage here is $15 an hour, so she took the cut down to approximately $12 in order to pay it back. Also, this company is super sketch and will do anything not to pay for their mistakes even going so far as to leave a hole in the roof, water damage, there for 10 months before fixing it. 
Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more captivating stories. Share your own experiences, opinions in the comments below, and let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, stay tuned for more epic tales.